Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. Today we're gonna get started working on the eight and a half by eight and a half Life is a Journey mini album. And of course this is a collection by Graphic 45. It's one of their newest releases. Um, I'm starting with a, with a complete collection bundle, which is a 12 by 12 collection pack, a 12 by 12 patterns and solid, eight by eight uh, collection pack, a pack of the ephemeras, a pack of the die cuts, and um, I'm missing something. Oh, the chipboard. Um, so that's what a complete bundle is when you buy it from our shop, and that's what I'm starting with. And then at the end, I forgot to do this in my last video, but at the end of this, um, when I do the walkthrough, I'm gonna go ahead and share with you the paper that's left over. Um, I didn't do it for the last one, but I, I am gonna make an effort to start doing that as we move forward, just so you guys know of the bundle, how much you're gonna use. It's my goal to use some of everything and try not to have uh, scraps because if you're like me, you can't throw anything away. Um, and so I wind up with just tons of scraps and not enough to actually do any projects. And I'm not really, I mean, it's great if you're a card maker, um, but with this channel and our shop, I just don't ever seem to have time to get back to doing any cards. So I wind up with all this stash that um, doesn't get put to use. Okay, so today what we're gonna focus on is the outside cover and the inside liners. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get those down so I can get them out of my way because I'm shuffling a lot of paper getting ready for the inside pages. So what I've decided to do for the inside liners are these two papers. Um, they're both from the Patterns and Solids and you can tell that by looking on the um, opposite side. Each one of these is trimmed down to eight and three eighths length or widthwise. And then each one of these panels, I cut down to eight and a quarter. And then I put it in the book and measured it down and took just a little strip off so that at the end, I've got a square that is eight and three eighths by eight and three eighths. And as you can see, I joined it here with tape. So I lay tape down on one and then push the other one right up against this to get one solid piece. Trim down to, again, eight and three eighths by eight and three eighths. So just under eight by eight and a half by eight and a half, which is gonna fit just perfectly on the inside here. As you can see with a nice eighth inch border. Now I don't typically give you the measurements for uh, the designer papers, but I am doing it for the inside cover. I've had that question come up a few times, but as a rule, if it's on a flap or a pocket page, I'm, I'm not giving you the cut measurements. I can tell you that I like a 16th inch border. So from a height and which width perspective, you're gonna trim down your designer paper one eighth inch in height and one eighth inch in um, width. And then you should get a nice tight 16th inch border. And some of you may have noticed there's a little barking in the background. So Nala needs some attention. So I'm gonna pause and be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about the interruption. It happens. Okay. So I also wanna go over a couple things I'm using. I'm using the powder puffs and I've talked about these in previous videos and we sell them in our shop and they're very reasonable. I just love them. Um, they don't transfer onto me. I don't have to have um, an applicator. I can use the um, sponge that's right with, um, that comes right with it. The color that I'm using is mahogany and I'm loving it. It's a very dark, rich brown. Um, before I put this down, I'll just go over, see how I've just lightly inked the edges. So my goal when I ink is to knock off the white core. It's really not to distress into the paper. If you like to distress into the paper, and it's certainly a look that a lot of people like, you're going to want to go with a little bit lighter color. Um, the dark is great if you're just knocking off the core, but if you want to distress in, I'd say this is probably too dark, at least for this collection. Okay. Having said all that, also want to promote our little uh, tear, tape tear tool. So um, this is a tool that I had designed. I had mocked up something using a couple of different things. One of them was an Omni grid and a pop socket. And there was a couple things I didn't like about the Omni grid. One was it had so many lines, it was really hard for my eyes to track. So I've simplified it by really just having these two lines, one reference line at an eighth of an inch and the other at a quarter of an inch, which are the most common uh, lines that I use when I'm constructing an album. Of course, it doesn't mean you can get rid of your ruler, but um, I find it to be very helpful. Um, but predominantly, I use it for a tape, ter tape tear tool, and we have those in stock right now. So head on over to Scrap and Create and get your tape tear tool. I love it. 
And so far, the folks that have purchased one, we're getting very positive feedback. So, And we want good and bad feedback so we can modify the tool uh, to make it more useful if, if there's something that you think of that you would like to see. All right. Okay, somebody had asked me um, in the comments of the videos why in some of the videos I use tape around all the edges of the designer paper and glue in the middle uh, in my early videos and then later went to just all glue. And the reason is um, it is just too time consuming when I'm doing a tut tutorial. I think it's it takes too much time to take the tape back off for you guys to go through that process with me. So this really streamlines it and what I have found is I'm just as happy. Now what I like about putting tape around the edge, if you have the time and um, can afford to use all that tape, I would recommend a quarter inch around the edge, as close to the edge as possible. And one of the benefits of putting that tape around the edge is when you lay your paper down, your glue will not bleed past the tape line. So that's really nice. You know all your edges will be secured. Occasionally I do have to come back when I use glue and pull up a corner and get a little bit more glue back there. Um, so that's one of the things I like about it, but it does it is more expensive and it does take a bit more time. But if I was building this for myself, that's probably what I would do, just so you know. <clears throat> Although I have found this to be, you know, quite reliable, um, so I don't have any complaints about this process at all. The other reason I like to use the glue is it gives you some time to wiggle it into place. You don't get that with um, just tape. If you if you want to try to use t more tape you're, and you want that wiggle process to be built in, you wind up having to put glue over your tape anyway. All right, so that's enough about that. And I had to stand up because I was having a panic attack that I didn't hit the play button, but I did. I, I tell you, old age is... is uh, it's not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. <laughs> I can't seem to hold a thought. Okay, so here we go. Let's get this second one in. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the back cover and the front cover on. Uh, I'm not gonna embellish it right now because I am gonna be handling the book. I, I like to do my embellishing of the covers last uh, because of the wear and tear on the cover of the book. Also, I want the front of my book to be flat when I'm installing my pictures or pages. So if there's any dimension on the cover, it will hold it will hold that front cover up when you're trying to line up your uh, pocket pages. So again, I would recommend not putting any <clears throat> dimension on the cover until you've got your pocket pages installed. Okay. And I know I'm doing things out of my typical order, and part of that is just because I want to get these papers down so I'm not shuffling or accidentally cut into papers that I've reserved for this purpose, which I have been. I have been known to do. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Now, that's pretty pretty simple. I'm probably going to come back and do some embellishing on this. One of the things that I went ahead and did was trimmed out these two strips that are going to go like, I think they're going to go like so but I haven't really committed. I want to make this decision after I get page one and page eight in so I can look at the design on page one and pull the inside flap into that design. So it may need another color to help balance it out. I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to set these aside and you may have noticed I try to keep things organized. Um, so each page has its own Ziploc. So I'm going to put this back inside the inside cover. And uh, the reason I do that is I, I want to make sure I don't accidentally cut into something um, that I really want to be reserved. Okay, so the cover. Pretty straightforward. Again, this is going to have a 16th inch border. This is an 8.5 by 8.5 album. So that makes this 8 and a third by, uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry, 8 and 3 eighths by eight and three eighths. So you've got a nice square. You're gonna need two of those, one for the front, one for the back, and then you're gonna need a trimmed out piece for your spine. And looking at it, yeah, I haven't trimmed that piece down. So I've already inked this. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down and I will be doing some embellishing. And just so you know my plan, the way I trim this out is, I'm just verifying. I believe I trim, this is the actual top of the signature page. 
So I trimmed off the bottom and the left hand side of the page so that the ship and the uh, car are going to be the focals. I'm going to, and the, I had to cut into life as a journey here. I'm probably going to put some dimensional aspect here that's going to cover that up. So when you're done, you really are focused on uh, these two modes of trend or three modes of transportation and not so much this life as a journey. When I had looked at the eight and a third or I'm sorry, I keep saying that, eight and three eighths by eight and three eighths and trying to figure out how to cut it off the 12 by 12. This is what I came up with and I, I think I like it the best because I really wanted the ship, but I didn't want to cut off part of the car. So I kind of went back and forth, but that's where I'm at. So you can see life is a journey down here and this was closer to the center of the original signature page. Okay, that was my thought process. I thought I'd share that with you. I know some of you... Um, just like to take the tutorials and build, and some of you use it for inspiration. Um, and then some of you are brand new and just want some, ask me questions about uh, design process in general. So as I'm constructing the album, I'll try to share with you my thought process for why I cut things where, um, and things to consider when you're looking at a sheet of paper and where you're gonna cut into it. And um, I, a lot of times I'll lay it down and, you know, block it so that I'm only looking at the piece that I think is going to get trimmed out. And I'll look at it that way for a little while before I actually start to cut into the paper. So that's kind of my design process. And then, you know, everybody's a little different. Some people just immediately cut everything down to, you know, uh, eight by eight or six by six, depending on the album size. I, I can't do that. I have to consider the paper and the image. Um, I, I don't have to, I need to. <laughs> it's just my, my process. Okay, so there's our cover. And again, we'll come back and add some dimension. This is pretty straightforward. Um, that's that. So now the back, this is one of my favorite um, images in the whole collection. I could have done with more of these. So it comes in a couple of different colors, but I honestly, the black and cream and gold here is my favorite. So this is going to be the back of the album. Um, one of the other things I was considering when I put the album together is I did a quick search to see what was out there and who had done any um, projects using the paper. And, um, and that's something I typically do. And I try to steer clear of um, the same pattern coordination that other designers have done. So what I found when I did the search on this one is a lot of people have highlighted the purple or lilac, whatever, it looks like purple to me, that's in the collection. And so I've actually, I'm doing my best not to use the purple and certainly it's not, I'm gonna try to limit how much gets used on um, the A side. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this right side up to make sure that I've got my bicycles all going the right direction before I lay this down. And then I'm going to turn it so I can see these three sides. There we go. Okay, so I'll share with you what I mean. Here's that lavender lilac color. And of course it's... Um, in the patterns and solids, there's a bunch a bunch more of this, but it was not my favorite color in the collection. And it's funny, when I'm working with Graphic 45, I always feel like there's one color that just sort of got tossed in and it's like, hmm, it doesn't really go with everything else. You could see, you could easily pull the purple out and the collection stands on its own. So I know it's integrated in a couple of places, but so this is the one that I won't be using a lot of. I will use it, but not, not as much as I've seen in some of the other examples. And like I said, that's partly because I want to introduce um, a new pattern coordination that, that hasn't already been done. Um, so I, I almost always try to search and see what other designers have done and then try to do something a little more refreshing. Now, having said all that, the cover's probably gonna get duplicated because a lot of people use the signature page for a cover. Okay, so those are my design thoughts for the cover of the inside liners and how I'm using the patterns. And I need to run off and trim this down, but this is going to be what's on the spine. So when we're done, this is what it's gonna look like. 
these three across here and I'll add some embellishments on the spine. I don't know what. I might um, actually hang some charms here, which means it's a good time for me to take a break because I would want to put a hole in this with a, a brad ring before I, I glue it down. So I'm gonna trim it and then put it back in the cover sleeve, set it aside until I'm ready to embellish the cover. So that's all we're gonna work on for right now. I'm gonna go get this uploaded and then uh, start prepping uh, to record for some of the other pages. I wanna thank everybody for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, take a moment to like, subscribe, and share. Um, we really appreciate when you share. Um, we do generate some revenue off this channel. Uh, and it's about enough to cover the products that get consumed as part of the promotion. So we do appreciate you guys sharing. Um, and also, you know, the, the core purpose of the channel really is to make people aware of um, Scrap and Create and our shop. We, we try to be very competitive with shipping and our price on products. And we do our best to have almost everything that Graphic 45 has released, even old collections. And then uh, Stamperia and Chow Bella are two new flagship um, brands that we're carrying, and we do our best to carry all of that in stock all of the time. So we really uh, appreciate you guys giving us a chance before you shop someplace else. We also do a good job of, and I say we, I mean Julie does a great job of making sure that we have all of the staples necessary to make albums. So we'll always have the, gl the glue, the tape, uh, some of the other staples um, that you're typically um, accustomed to using in building your uh, albums. So I had mentioned it before, and I want to tell you, it's the beginning of October right now, and our runway for shipping glue is closing. So if you haven't already stocked up on your art glitter glue, get over there and do that. Once the temperatures drop below 40, we cannot ship the product. So this is Daphne for now signing out. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I'll be back soon to start covering uh, some of the internal pages for this album.